Hi everyone, thanks for joining me on the Truth and Precept YouTube channel here. Today we are going to be looking at a prophecy that Jesus Christ gave about false prophets and a huge key that he gave on how to not be deceived by them, those false prophets. And it's very interesting, right? This key is only found in one place and it takes a little bit of digging that to actually find it. And so we're going to look at that, right? So and one of the why this is important, right? Is because part of these tests that we are going to be going through in the last days is being able to recognize a true prophet from a false prophet. Right? This is something that everyone who believes they are a true follower of Christ needs to do, right? Christ spoke about it, he taught us, and and said that many are going to be deceived, right? And so we're going to see, you know, how this really affects us, right? And, and those who claim to be the very elect, right? We'll see what, what makes those people the elect. So a little fun start to this, you know, as I was going through this, this topic, you know, this quote and prophecy from the famous Star Wars uh, series came to my mind. Right, so there's a Star Wars prophecy, and it says, quote, A chosen one shall come, born of no father, and through him will ultimate balance in the force be restored. Right, and so the, the, the irony, right, was that everyone understood this prophecy the wrong way. Right, from the wrong perspective, right? When in the end, it, you know, the, the, this person who they thought was going to, you know, be this master Jedi actually turned out to be Darth Vader, right? And he really brought balance to the Force by uh, introducing right, the evil side you know, into the Empire. And so, you know, there's this, this uh, quote from Yoda right that reflects that irony where he says a prophecy misread could have been right and so i thought that really related to this false prophet prophecy that christ gives in matthew 24 and and i believe we've been looking at it in the wrong way so let's get to it i got a bunch of scriptures here to cover you know it's you know, I try to use as much scripture as possible because, like I said, I don't really have, believe I, or feel I have the authority to, to say anything different, right? And, and so I use the scriptures to say what I think, you know, they're saying by putting all these together and through a lot of study and cross-referencing, you know, I don't rely on just a single scripture to make a case. You know, I want to find as much support you know, for uh, a teaching that I might find to really prove it. And so let's take a look here at, now this is the Joseph Smith version right, of Matthew 24. And this is the important part to, to really, uh, rather than the Bible one, because there are some, I've done an analysis verse by verse, and there are things in the new, in the, in the Joseph Smith version that you won't get in the King James Version of the Bible. And if you only look at the King James Version, you're missing the key, right? The key is actually found in, in Joseph Smith's version. So let's read this here. If we come down to, um, let's see, Matthew 24, 24, right? So we get here several instances where Christ is telling us, I have these highlighted here and underlined, Christ is telling us these things for the elect's sake, right? And he says it down here as well. He's telling all these things because it is the elect, generally, who are going to be reading and studying his words, you know, as we have them in the scriptures. Um, and so we really need to pay attention how this relates to us as the elect, right? And so we go over here to uh, verse 22, 
right? And for in those days there shall also arise false Christ, right? And false Christ, right? That may not necessarily be a person, right? That may be a system that we have implemented or somebody has implemented that will bring salvation, you know, exaltation to you uh, rather than relying on Jesus Christ, the, the person and his atonement. Right? And we'll, we'll, we'll see how some of that is taught in other scriptures. Right? So for in those days, right, last days, there shall also arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if possible they shall deceive the very elect who are the elect according to the covenant so one of the problems with being deceived is you don't know when you are being deceived when you are or when you are deceived that's part of you know part of the game there and so if if you don't think you you're deceived that doesn't mean you're not deceived right that's all that's saying you know when i when i say that so a few questions right so who are the elect right christ is talking to the elect right and so right as as members of the church we would say right those who have made and kept their covenants right are the elect and so that would mean you know that is us right so we start to get some clues here as we start to piece things together about people who believe they are the elect. And, you know, we go over to the Book of Mormon and we find, right, Mormon has put these lessons, these history lessons in it because he's seen our day, he knows what stories most closely resemble what we are going through or the problems that we are inflicting, you know, upon ourselves and others. And so let's go over to Alma chapter 31, right? This is the story of Rami Umpton. And what I want to call out here is what I have highlighted. You know, this is what these people who, who go to the synagogue, you know, once a week, and they get up, uh, you know, on the top of this tower, you know, or maybe podium, we can compare it to our day, and they speak words uh, to everyone else, and they take turns right, speaking to each other. And and here, uh, Alma has really uh, summarized their message that they they say. Right. So he says here in verse sixteen, we be- This is what the the people, right, are are saying. Um, you know, in this Ramiumpton place, it says, We believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren. And we look at that and we say, well, Who's the brethren? Right? I think in this case, we can say, perhaps as church members, we can say this is the non members that are all around us. And so we believe that thou hast separated us from our brethren who aren't members of the church and we do not believe in the traditions of our uh, non-member brethren you know maybe the protestants and baptists and you know those around us which was handed down to them by the childishness of their fathers and we look at the fathers of you know martin luther the protestants and all those uh, founding fathers of, of christian religions today and churches but we believe that thou has elected us to be thy holy children. And then going down to verse 17, but thou art the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thou has elected us that we shall be saved while all around us are elected to be cast by uh, thy wrath down to hell. So this is a lesson that we're given about these people. And, you know, it doesn't sound... Um, really too t- different you know we we say you know we believe you know we are the true church right that we're you know essentially you know we are right everybody else is wrong uh we you know we are on the path of the covenant path we're going to be saved and everybody else has to join our church in order to be saved 
so we kind of have these similar conversations, you know, the, the rhetoric that we tell each other in, in our church buildings. So who are, so this is, you know, who are the elect, right? Generally, we think of it as members of the church, right? And, and so who should the elect be weary of, right? Well, it says we should be weary of the false prophets, right? A false prophet is somebody who says they are a prophet, right? They're not going around saying, I'm a false prophet, right? They be believe and they are saying they are prophets, right? And, and they can offer exaltation through the laws of man. So let's go over to Jeremiah here. Now, Jeremiah... Here, th this is a, a chapter that is really incredible and very revealing. Um, I encourage you, there's a, you can find some videos on this on YouTube done by other channels uh, of, of a really in-depth review. I've done my own in-depth review for myself, right? So that I'm not just believing the words of others, you know, as I encourage everyone listening here, right? I'm sharing... What, uh, what I've studied and come to believe, and I encourage you to do your own study. Right? That's the only way you're really going to find out for yourself. And so here in Jeremiah, right, he's talking about prophets in the last days, right? And so you can see here through, as I scroll through, right, these pastors or shepherds, you know, they're... Um, you know, and he gets into the prophets and says they are adulterers. You know, they um, they're profane, they're wicked, right? The, they are the prophets of Samaria. Samaria is where uh, the tribe of Ephraim that was their capital, right? Prophets of Jerusalem. They commit adultery. They they prophesy in Baal's name, right? As far as Baal was a fertility god. And so dealing with sexual uh, teachings, and the Lord's going to punish them, right, in in their own season. But we get down right here, verse twenty, right. He says, in the latter days, you're going to hopefully be able to figure this out, right. You're going to consider His words perfectly, w what they mean and how they relate to us in the last days, right. And and saying right. God says, the Lord says, I have not sent these prophets, they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Um, so as we go down here, what was interesting here in verse 26, right, is that these prophets, right, that are prophesying lies, right, yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. Right? These prophets really believe in their own hearts that they are prophets you know and, and we see that in the Book of Mormon right with uh, Korhor right where he knew the things he was teaching were wrong but as he continued down that path he started to he says he started to really believe the things that he was teaching right and so these prophets these false prophets right uh, you know, they're, they're, they think they're prophets, but they are false prophets of God. They really believe they are prophets, but they've been, they are deceived, right? And so the real warning to the elect, you know, is not about these crazy one-off people, right, who claim to be Christ or, you know, the Messiah, right, who's come back or, or a prophet, you know, who is outside of the church's priesthood hierarchy, you know, you know, members rarely fall for those, right? Those people are not deceiving the majority of people, the majority of members, right? Um, but rather, right, it's those in our own midst who claim to be prophets, seers, and revelators, right, who teach that uh, temple performances are going to save us, right? These outward actions, right? And, and right, that's probably really hard to believe and hear, you know, for almost every member of the church, right? But this is what Abinadi taught, right? Let's go back to the Book of Mormon, Scriptures for Our Days. Um, 
let's take a oh, let's go over here right Abinadi he taught uh, the king King Noah right in the in his court of priests right and Abinadi you know he doesn't like he's he's a real prophet right he prophesies you can read about him uh, throughout these chapters and uh, he he doesn't feel good about necessarily doing what he's doing, right? He says in verse 26, right? The Lord would not have caused me to come forth and prophesy evil concerning this people, right? He, does, he doesn't want to come, you know, do this. He wants to probably speak good things, right? But the Lord has commanded him to come and and prophesy evil concerning the people, right? And, and their, you know, and the religion that they've created, right? Under the wicked leadership. Of, the, of King Noah and his priests. But one thing that was interesting, right, as you go down to verse 30, Abinadi, what does he say to him? He says, Therefore there was a law given them, right? Yea, a law of performances and of ordinances. This really reminded me of, right, the ordinances and uh, performances, right, the temple work, right? What we do in our temples today. Right. And so there was a law given to them, yeah, a law of performances, ordinances, a law which they were to observe strictly from day to day to keep them in remembrance of God and their duty towards Him. Right? And so we're told to go to the temple often, right? And, and to do this work, you know, our duty to our dead and you know, to, you know, so that we can remember God and all that He's done for us. Right, and I say, behold, I say unto you that all these things were types of things to come. Right, and now, did they understand the law? Did Abednego is asking, did they understand the law? Right, as we relate this to ourselves, you know, did we understand really what we're doing in the temple? I say unto you, nay, they did not understand. They did not all understand the law. And this because of the hardness of the hearts, for they understood not that there could not be any man saved except it were through the redemption of God. Right. And so getting your, you know, going through the temple ordinances as we have them today, right, this isn't to necessarily say in the future those ordinances won't change and, and that they will be more pertinent to our salvation, but as they stand today, uh, we they they will not bring us exaltation. There there are many pieces that are not in place for that to happen, and even then, right? It's not doing these ordinances that save you. Right? It is it is Christ, right? Your relationship with Him, uh, having faith in Him, repenting of your sins, and re receiving the baptism of water in the baptism of the Holy Ghost, right? that is his doctrine that he taught to the Nephites. Right? And he says, any more or any less than that is not my doctrine. Right? This is my doctrine for how you get saved. Uh, so here we, so the you know this is how it relates to us, right? That right, we have there are fake prophets who are prophesied in the last days. They are deceiving many, right? They are teaching that these laws and performances and ordinances are how we're going to be exalted, right? This, this would, I would classify as false Christ, right? This, you know, like I said, may not necessarily be a person, right? But we are teaching how you can be saved by the law of man. Uh, let's see here. So let's see, look at what Joseph Smith said. Right, so this is Institute Manual, Joseph Smith, uh, Matthew section here. And Joseph Smith said, when a, when a man goes about prophesying, commands men to obey his teachings, he must either be a true or false prophet. False prophets always arise to oppose the true prophets. And they will prophesy so very near the truth that they will deceive almost the very chosen ones. Right, so here's this key, right? The scriptures say the very elect ones. I like how Joseph Smith said it, the very chosen ones. So it is going to be the very chosen ones who are able to discern, and this is an important thing to do in our day, which ones are the false prophets and which ones are the true prophets. Right, And we're going to get to that key. 
right? Um, of how the very chosen ones discern that. And he continued, the world always mistook false prophets for true ones. Right? The world's always been deceived about who is true and who is false. And those that were sent of God, they considered to be false prophets. So men who have literally uh, been called of God, like by God, not, not you know, by men through God, right? men who have literally been called of God, right? they considered them to be false prophets. And hence they killed and stoned and punished and imprisoned the true prophets. Right, because these true prophets generally spoke hard things. Right, the spirit is is like the sword of truth. Right, and it hurts. Right, and as Nephi taught in Second Nephi twenty eight, right, when you are presented with a higher level of truth, you know you will either receive it with gladness, or you will uh, tremble and fall because you are built on a sandy foundation of which is comprised of the precepts of men uh, that he's talking about. And so if you're built on the precepts of men, right, things that true prophets are going to say, you're not going to like. Right? You're not going to agree with them, and you get angry. Right? It's not going to bring you glad tidings. You're not going to feel good about what they're telling you. Right? Because like Abinadi and others, right, they are prophesying evil against the people even the people who think they are the people of God, right? right and so they hide themselves, um, keep going down. And, and so while the people, they cherish honor and support knaves, vagabonds, hypocrites, imposters, and the basis of men. Right? And so this is, I don't know, perhaps it's part of the natural man, but this is what we tend to do. And so it's going to be hard, right? They, these these, these people, these false pro uh, prophets, right, they are going to teach so very near the truth that unless you do what the very elect, the very chosen people do, you're not going to be able to figure this out. Okay, and, and that kind of goes back to, right, it's um, the problem with being deceived is you don't know when you are deceived. Let's go over here. So we have this uh, this chain of scriptures that I uh, felt impressed, you know, as I was, as I was studying Matthew twenty five or Matthew twenty four. It then leads into Matthew twenty five with the talk of the ten virgins, and and we learn that right the five foolish virgins, right they you know they didn't prepare, um, and there's a lot of meaning to you know what that preparation means. But they come right to the place where the bridegroom is, and they're, you know, pounding on the door, right, and you know they want to get in, and Christ answers the door, and he says here in verse twelve, "Verily I say unto you, I know you not," right, and and um, and we get, and and Joseph, there's a Joseph Smith translation where he says uh, instead of "I know you not," uh, he says, "Ye know me not." So, where else has has Christ said the same phrase, right? Or or taught the same thing about a people who don't know Him, right? And so we get here first thing to remember, right? This is the foolish virgins. He says that uh, that they don't know Him and He doesn't know them, right? Let's go over here a few chapters back to Matthew chapter seven. And he says here, right up above, he's talking about uh, false prophets again, right? And it's very important to measure them by their fruits, right? Uh, and so continuing with that teaching, he says, Not everyone that saith to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. Right? So, you know, have we not um, prophesied, right? Right? So very near the truth, right? In, 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 in what Joseph Smith said, right? And we've cast out devils, right? By priesthood authority, 
you know, we have priesthood authority. We've done these things. And in thy name done many wonderful works. Right? And so these, these people are saying, you know, look, Lord, we've, we've prophesied in, in your name. And we've, we have priesthood authority. And we've done many wonderful things. You know, we've proclaimed the gospel. We've redeemed the dead. We've we provided welfare. Right? right. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, that ye that work iniquity. Right? And so we start to get a little bit more uh, understanding about who these people are. Right? And then we go over to right, our very own scripture in the Doctrine and Covenants. Here in section 112, verses 25 and 26. And, of, and this is talking about the judgments that will that the Lord will start to pour out upon uh, upon his people in the last days. And upon my house shall it begin, and from my house it shall go forth. Right? right. When he's saying my house, right, he's talking about his people, his covenant people. Right, people who have made covenants with them. And whatever he's it's gonna happen, he's saying it's gonna ha it's gonna start with my covenant people. Right? First among those among you, saith the Lord, who have professed to know my name. Professed, right? They've testified, they witness that they know Christ's name. Right? But he says, and they have not known me. Right? They don't know me. Right? And he doesn't know them. And they have blasphemed me against me in the midst of my house. Right? And so, who doesn't Christ know? Right? So it says, right, those who profess, who testify, witness to know my name. Right? But they've really blasphemed because of a lot of other reasons that we haven't covered in this video, who say they prophesy, who have priesthood authority, or think they do, to cast out devils, and who say they've done many wonderful things, who the Lord also considers to be foolish virgins. If it's not starting to become obvious who these people are, I think the next the next uh, section, or next set of scriptures here, will really specify it. And this is found in Doctrine and Covenants 64. And this is talking about a people, right, when it's talking about when Zion's established and there are the inhabitants there. And they are going to be able to judge things because they'll have the Holy Spirit as their guide. Right? And here in verse 39, and it says, And liars and hypocrites shall be proved by them. Who's them? Well, the, who it says just before, the inhabitants of Zion. right? And they who are not apostles and prophets shall be known. Right? So this Doctrine and Covenants, talking about the end times, right? when Zion's going to be created. Zion doesn't exist yet. So this is coming in the future. And it's going to be proved by people who actually do go to Zion who are not apostles and who are not prophets or who are false prophets and false apostles right? they shall be known right? so how do we not be deceived right? let's go to the let's go to the uh, key here back over in Matthew 24 so let's scroll down and we come down to verse 37 Right, Christ. Right, I don't. I don't. I haven't heard this anyone teach us, and it's you know, like I said, it's only found in Joseph Smith Matthew. It's not found in the Bible. Right? But it says, "And whoso treasureth up my word, shall not be deceived." So what do you have to do? You have to, you have to treasure up the word, the scriptures. You have to study them. You have to know them like the back of your hand, right? It's, you have to be able to put them together to understand what are the true teachings, what are the prophecies that are given, 
and and part of the, right if we go over to uh, Jeremiah right come down here um, people like this prophecy in Jeremiah 23 is incredible right and it says and when this people or the prophet and it were priests shall ask you saying what is the burden right? what is this prophecy of the Lord that Jeremiah has just given us thou shalt then say unto them what prophecy right? I will even forsake you saith the Lord right? people you know people don't know this prophecy right when you, when you tell them about it right I, I've checked in uh, our come follow me study program for this year for the Old Testament and if you look at it here let's, I think this is important to look at it will come follow me and for the individuals Old Testament and let's go down to um, October now you'll see here that in October 10th, right that week, we cover Jeremiah up to chapter 20. And then let's go to the next week. We skip to Jeremiah chapter 30. We are skipping this incredible prophecy that relates to us in the last days about prophets in chapter Jer in Jeremiah chapter 3 because like, that is a, it, it is a hard lesson. People are probably not going to accept it, and and we can't teach it as a church in our lessons, uh, because of perhaps what people will say, right? And it will create a lot of confusion. So that's suspect to me, right? Why aren't we teaching these things? We're and and this isn't the only one. There are other chapters in in, in the scriptures that we skip. You know, when you look at if you go back here to, um, you know, the scripture in Doctrine and Covenants, you look at the Institute Manual, it goes through kind of verse-by-verse verse analysis, and then it stops. It stops, you know, somewhere over here, like in verse 35 or something, and it skips verse 39. I've Googled it, I've tried to find out if anyone has said anything about this, and I haven't found anything. Like the church isn't including this in their study. They're not providing an explanation. What does that mean? And so this reminded me, you know, as we go to back to Matthew 24, th that key, right? And this is what I've done is I have really turned, you know, during this time to the scriptures and I've started over in, 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 in understanding what I believe I, uh, because I, I found that a lot of things that I did believe were the precepts of men so I, I can't feel like I have full confidence in, in what our current you know modern day presidents and apostles teach us uh, because of that and so as I've re re turned to the scriptures and I took Christ's word to say go search the prophecies of Isaiah like, they are great and, and this scripture here, right, to go treasure up my word so that you're not deceived, so that you can know when something is tr the truth of God and when something is a precept. And it really, you know, in the conversations I've had with friends and family about the things that I'm learning, it really reminded me here of Lehi's dream. And once again, this is kind of, maybe we have looked at this from the wrong perspective, right? If you imagine this great and spacious building, right, what are the great and spacious buildings among us, right? It's our churches, it's our temples, right? And, and we have people who scoff at those who are, what? Clinging to the rod of iron, right? Who are partaking who are true disciples, who are following uh, you know, the path that leads the straight and narrow to Christ, like they are scoffing at those people. And, and that has been my experience as well, as I, you know, I'm not trying to teach anything of my own. 
uh, I'm trying to teach what the scriptures are saying. And when I tell my friends or family, you know, look at all these scriptures, put them all together so you can see the big picture, right? They're all puzzle pieces, right? You know, I get, well, you, you know, you're not understanding the scriptures right, right? Um, that's not what our leaders have taught us. And that, that we need to, essentially they're telling me we need to trust in the arm of flesh right, as our guide. Uh, rather, but what does it say? Those who actually get to Christ are those who cling, right? Who treasure up the words of God for themselves, right? And, and so, right, and, and, and people think you've fallen away when you find things in the scriptures. Not just one thing, but a whole host of scriptures that, that support, uh, that go against the teachings of the church and they think you have fallen away and they're reaching out to you telling you right that you're an apo you know you've apostatized right because you haven't gone along and and believe things that the leaders teach that aren't supported by scripture so that, that was a lot there I'll leave that for you once again uh, thanks for listening to the end you know you know there's probably there there are more scriptures Right, that fit right into this conversation, you know. If, um, you know, if in your own study, you know, if you want to comment and put the, throw those in this video, you know, for others to see as well. But this is not a unique message just to these scriptures that I read. It is found throughout the scriptures. And um, thanks again for for listening.